So um, if you've never done this before with me, a couple quick things about how this works. And for some of you who've you know, joined before, you know the drill. But essentially, I'm going to provide some comments and critiques. Um, they may include tips or suggestions, processing ideas, and so forth. So I don't intend to ever ever be hurtful or embarrass you in any way. Um, I always try to find the things I really like and try to find some things that I might suggest, uh, but it doesn't mean that you got to, you know, do exactly that. So um, those are two main things about how I like to do these. And then um, I do welcome your participation. If you have any thoughts or ideas or comments, and sometimes I post out or ask questions of you, Comment, respond in the chat box, um, you know, unmute yourself. I welcome that. This is supposed to be a thoughtful, interactive process of communication and support for each other. Um, please don't ever say anything harsh or degrading about someone's work. We truly are all on this journey together. And, you know, we all start somewhere, and I appreciate people who start at all. It takes a lot of guts to submit your images to have someone else give you feedback on it. And I say that for myself, too. So um, be kind. You know, we're all in here just to help each other and grow and have some fun. All right. So um, welcome to anybody who's just joined. I think we might have had another person join. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, and we have quite a number of images I'm going to try to get through tonight. So I, what I like to do is I'm going to open them in uh, Photoshop. Not that I plan to Photoshop everything, but it's just an easy way for me to kind of, you know, explain some things. And sometimes I might give you a processing tip or two. Um, so Beth has submitted this one. Beth, I picked you first. Um, first of all, just looking at this image, what an incredibly colorful, vibrant happy image like this is just beautiful and I love 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 um, when we're looking at this image let me get out my little pointer here um, wh when you're looking at this color here and you kind of put this in the lower left hand side and then I've got it balanced over here with this other pop of blurry pink like that is just such a nice thing it balances that out and you did a nice job compositionally on doing that you also have this kind of off to side off to the side in the, um, you know, almost in that rule of thirds, a little bit further over than that, and that's totally fine. But I like that it kind of keeps you in. So this one here works well on the left with this blossom here on the right. It kind of contains you in the middle. Um, the yellow and the pink is just gorgeous together. I, you know, I love these flowers. Looks like I think they're zinnias. Um, they're beautiful. And then the butterfly couldn't be more tack sharp. You just nailed it. I'm going to zoom in for a minute so everyone else can see. Keep in mind, people have sent me potentially lower resolution images as well. So when I zoom in, it might get a little pixely because they didn't share the full version of it. Um, that's fine. That's fine for, for this. But I just want to point out that that eye is super, super sharp. And everything about this just is really clear and I love that I think your exposure looks really good um, not too bright and not too dark nothing's overblown and that's a tricky thing to do um, I don't know if you post process this at all or not um, but I think the way you handled the color and the, the brightness and, and all of that just works extremely well nice and sharp and the background is a beautiful blur and you've got purples in here I just really enjoy this picture if you want to, um, a couple little tips that I always do when I'm looking at my pictures, and you did a pretty good job of this, um, but I always look around the edges to see if there's any bright spots or super dark spots or anything that I could uh, potentially hang my eye on, right? So I look at the whole image. Sometimes you can even blur your eyes a little bit by squinting and just look at what jumps out and where it jumps out. And a couple of things that pop out a little bit to me are going to be this um, this area up here with this one little dark spot. And I think this pops out a little bit. And just this area here. So, and you can kind of, you know, keep going and going and going. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't have some color or dimension in your image. But if I took this, I'm going to use the clone tool quickly. And I might do it at about 30% uh, opacity. And if I took some color in here, and I just lightly touched that a little bit here, and I'm going to try to blend that in a little bit. If I did that there, 
and then I went and I could tone this part down here a little bit. I might even just grab some green and just light, whoops, not like that. I got the edge built in there. Um, actually, let me grab uh, a layer and I'm going to touch some of this green in here. And I'm just doing a, a, just a low opacity, maybe 20%. I could tone that green down just a little and even this one in here a little bit take out any of that super bright stuff because your eyes go to the brightest things first and then the darkest things. And by toning that down just a little bit, I'm going to go here on the upper left-hand side. Now, I'm not, you know, adding zebras or doing anything crazy here. Just toning it down a little bit, looking at my edges. And my eye tends to want to go to those bright things. And when I can tone them down a little bit, it just makes the whole image easier for me as a viewer, I'm going to get rid of that little bit there, to just see what I want to see. So um, I'm going to merge these two just so you can um, see the difference. So this is the final and there's the previous. So again, I didn't do much, Beth. This is a pretty awesome image. But there's number two, the, the finished one. And there's one. So it just helps my eye from going up here and down here and over here and keeps it easier for me to stay right in that image. Um, Beth, I don't know if you're on the line. You have any comments? I don't see anything in the chat, but you're welcome to unmute yourself and, uh, you know, talk about it a little bit if you want to with me, if you're here. I am. And um, first, let me thank you for this opportunity. This is great. Oh, you're um, welcome. Good to have you here. Yeah. Uh, and I agree, that's a much better image, especially with that dark spot at the top. Um, I had not thought about getting rid of that, but as soon as you pointed it out, it was like, yes. Um, yeah, it's a gorgeous image, though. Really, really beautiful. Thank you. I was wondering, um, the upper part of the wing caught uh -huh. a blur, even though it was in the same plane as the rest uh -huh. of the butterfly. Do you have any advice on how I could have mm. corrected that, or not necessarily in post, but in taking the picture? You know, that's a great question. So if you focused here, probably what happened, and I imagine you focused here because this looks absolutely tack sharp and all this right in here. Um, it, it, what lens were you using? I'm, I'm just curious. I, I could probably look up the metadata too, um, but tell me a little bit about how you shot it. Um, actually, I was using a Tamron 18 by 400. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. And you know what? I think this is um, the metadata didn't show up in this. It might have been a, a copy of the original, so it I, might I, not have came through. Yeah, and that's okay. Um, okay, so the eighteen to four hundred, and you're probably zoomed in a little bit more on oh, it wow. to, to get that butterfly and also that that compression, that depth of field that shows. Um, I suspect that maybe this butterfly either could have been slightly tilted one way, or um, you were, you know, just your positioning. You might have been. I mean, it looks dead on. I agree with you. It's a little bit softer up here. I'm thinking it was just a little bit of a different angle, um, just slightly, right? Like if his wings were tipped, like if he wasn't 100% sideways to you, right? Parallel, you know, to your, or well, perpendicular actually to your lens. If this was pushed back a little bit, or if his body was at a little bit of an angle, that might have just caused it. Um, one thing that you're gonna, I'm going to introduce a solution and then introduce another problem by doing so. One thing you could try, I'm not sure what your aperture was at. Um, you know, this all looks pretty well in focus. It's curious to me why this might not have been and everything else. I mean, you're looking at the depth of this flower, you know, which is probably, you know, inch and a half, two inches in diameter. Um, you know, I'm looking at this. This looks sharp. It could have also been, I don't, I don't know, but he might have you know, moved his wings slightly up there. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't look like motion blur to me. It looks more like it's just a little bit out of the plane. Um, if we look at the back of this flower here, it starts to get just ever so slightly blurry. Um, and this, you know, we look at the, the stem here, it's a little bit blurry. It almost just looks like this part might have been, for some reason, a little further back. Like if his body was just not quite perpendicular to your lens up there in those wings. I don't think it's you. I think it's something to do with depth of field. And when you move out of it ever so slightly, you know, you have um, 
you know, the area that's in focus and then it start focus starts to decrease as you come forward into the image and it starts to decrease as you go back. And I don't know, to me, it looks like those wings are just a little bit out of that plane of focus. A higher aperture could correct for that. But then you're going to start getting things back here that are in focus and that can look distracting. So, you know, to me, it, it doesn't really bother me simply because it, now, if this were out of focus, the eyes and things like that, that would have been a problem, even if the wings were perfect. I think you got the focus where you needed it, and it doesn't personally bother me. But, you know, again, there's the to each their own kind of thing going on, too. So, um, anyway, and if anybody else has thoughts, feel free and chime in. Um, let's see. And someone is typing in. Uh, let me look at this here. Um when I use the opacity tool, how do I prevent the edges from being too defined or darker where I overlap? Um, okay, let me see if I can take that question when that person has an image, and I will see if I can answer that then. Uh, Beth, other thoughts or comments, questions? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to have you here. It's good to see a new face, and I appreciate it so much. All right, I'm going to go on and um, pull up the next image here. And uh, what's not Bosque del Apache? That's a whole different ball game. There we go. All right, Beth, I'm going to pull up your other image as well. Oh, this looks like fun. Polo match. What a fun thing. Oh, no. Um, Maggie. It says Maggie May. Um, yeah, that's you what I take pictures May? based off of, yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought, gosh, should I get this? That's okay. All right. What a cool action shot. Um, and the fact that all these guys are in, and girls, it looks like potentially are in focus. It's extraordinary. I love this image. There's just so much cool stuff going on. And all the horses being, um, you know, pretty nicely in focus. It, it just keeps me engaged. All your little polo, uh, um, what do they call them, mallets, or I'm not sure what the term is, but, um, you know, they're all, none of them are cut off. Um, the sky is pretty nice and dramatic. You can see it. It's not blown out. It looks super sharp. You've got a lot of gesture here. This is just a really well done image, and I can tell by your um, processing, Beth, that you took really nice care to make sure we can see the faces and that everything is, um, you know, not full of shadows and so forth. It just looks really, really nice. Lots of action. And, um, you know, you can, I love this here where it looks like he's just getting ready to come down and smack that ball. And uh, I love this coming in the back here. Like, it's, it's just super cool. Nobody is merging in, in the wrong way, like, you know, each of the faces can be seen in the horses and the players. I, I honestly don't know what else I'd say to do with this. It's beautiful. You didn't oversaturate or, you know, kind of overdo it in any way. And yet you pulled out um, enough of the highlights and enough of the, um, you know, the color and so forth so that we can see the faces and they're not all in shadow. Um, I don't know what else I do. I love this. If anybody else has any thoughts or anything, feel free and chime in. I'm going to go take a look at the chat window here. Um, yeah, nice detail in the horse's muscle tone. Um, yes, I agree with that. And and somebody else said, uh, Bill here, beautiful image. Yeah, it is. It's a really, really great shot. I would be proud of that. And if those players had the chance to see your image, um, they should be buying it because it's awesome. I really, really love it. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Good job. Love it. And a new, a new, new topic, right? I haven't seen polo in these critiques yet, so that's fun to see something totally new. Well, uh, believe it or not, this I just took that Sunday, and it was the you? very first time I have photographed polo. Oh my gosh! So that's why I thought it would be good to throw in because I didn't really yeah. know what I was doing. <laughs> well, you know, you hit the ball out of the park. No pun intended here, but. <laughs> it looks really nice. Really, really well done. That would be a fun event to shoot. I've not yet shot a polo event. That sounds like fun. All right. So uh, Dolph Brust is, um, the I think, the person who submitted this and uh, bee collecting, which is, uh, first of all, so cool. You know, we're struggling with our bees uh, declining rapidly due to disease and pesticides and what no, what else so you know we used to think bee pictures as being a dime a dozen and now I kind of think about them differently than I ever have before because we're losing them so um, nice job photographing our little bees here and first of all 
Hard to get a bee in flight. We get lots of pictures of bees on flowers. Not nearly as many people are, ab are able to nicely capture bees coming into the flower. And you did a really nice job of that. I love that there's separation here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And you can also see that there's pretty nice definition here and focus, which is, gosh, that's a tricky thing to do. And I bet there's some... Uh, Pictures that are, you know, perhaps not winners, because I know if I were trying to do this, they certainly all wouldn't be in focus, and you nailed it. So nice job there. I also really like the direction of the light that you chose for this. So you get some definition, right? These, these have some light and shade, and you get all this nice light and shade down here in the flowers and can actually see texture, and it's not overblown. It's really pretty. And... By the way, shooting this so that the bee's in focus and the flower is in focus is not easy when, um, you know, you're looking at the different planes uh, that things can be on. So you could focus on the bee and then the flower's out of focus or focus on the flower and the bee's out of focus. So really nice job doing that. The other thing I really like about this image is that you have a diagonal line coming into the image. So diagonal lines are super powerful. And they're a great compositional element to try to include in our photography. And I love this coming in. You just didn't shoot it straight up and down. Not that there wouldn't have been anything inherently wrong with that, but the diagonal tends to make people like the image more. So you got a nice diagonal line coming in, and then you also have this diagonal line going this way through the flower. So it just adds a little bit more interest than, you know, straight up and down kind of thing. Um, so I, I really like those pieces. I like also that you've toned down the edges a little bit to draw my attention into the flower. At least I think you've done that. Uh, perhaps it's natural, but it looks like um, you add a little bit of a soft vignette, and, and that appeals to me. I really like that. It also takes away um, my eye wanting to go so much to these pieces here. I wouldn't be offended, and again, this depends on what you're going to do with the image and where it's supposed to go. If you're entering it into a contest, most contests don't want you to manipulate the image extensively or get rid of things unless you're cropping. Um, if it's going on your wall or a piece of art somewhere, then, you know, all bets are off and you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be uh, more advantageous for you to just get rid of this extra piece of the flower. And there's some pros and cons to that. Like it does add a little bit more weight over to this side. But if we tried to get rid of it, there's a couple different ways we could try it. We could go into uh, content aware fill. So I could circle this, for example, with my lasso tool and go to um, edit fill, content aware fill. And that should take that right out. We might need to clean it up a little bit, but... Oh, pretty close. Um, I'm going to try it again. I'll try it on this one. So we'll do um, edit, fill, content aware fill, and then I can usually clean up the rest of that with a healing brush or cloning. So that one got rid of that one. If I take my healing brush instead, healing brush is like mini content aware fill, and I could take that and just cover that up and get rid of that, and get rid of that one, and then it's gone. Um, just Think about, and I'll show the first one and the second one, um, think about how you feel looking at that image and where your eye goes. And then I'll turn on the original one again. So there's the first one. And there's with the stuff removed. For me personally, it allows me to have a more focused experience on the flower and the bee. And it's not a big deal to get rid of those other things. But, you know, it's a personal choice. You may like it, but I, I feel like this kind of just keeps taking me over here. And I think your emphasis on the experience is right in here. So personally, I might just think about get rid, getting rid of those. Um, but other than that, I love this image. I think it's beautiful. And I think you did a great job. I like this fun bokeh in the background. It's, you know, it's bright. It makes it pop. And um, this is just a beautiful image. Um, are you on the line? Do you have anything you want to discuss or talk about with it? I 
I can see you, Dolph. Um, I can try to unmute you if you like. I'm not sure if you're there or need help. You can always text me here in the chat window. Um, Okay, I'm not hearing anything, so you might be might have stepped away for a minute, but text me if you can't figure out how to. Um, oh, okay, you can't talk because you're in a noisy place. All right, got it. No problem at all. If you have any questions, feel free and type them in that chat window, and I'll be glad to um, to help you with anything you need. Um, but I love this image. Really, really pretty. Um, I, you should be proud of that one. Okay. Um, so let me go to the next one here and see where we're at. I've got your great blue heron I'm going to pull up, Dolph. And again, feel free and, um, you know, type any comments or questions that you might have. Um, and thanks for joining, despite it being noisy over there. I appreciate it. Okay, so we have great blue heron, which is one of my favorite birds. If you ever look at my logo, it has a heron in it because they've been special to me since I was a kid. So I always love it when someone sends in a heron. Um, you did a wonderful job of getting clarity in this image. It's nice and sharp. I love, uh, go get my pointer tool here. I love the clarity that you have with the different um, feathers that you're seeing with the bird and all those little streaks. The color looks nice. It's not over or underexposed. Um, sometimes people can get into that problem, especially um, with the head feathers in the face being overexposed. That looks pretty darn nice, and it's sharp, right? Right where it needs to be in the face. It's nice and sharp. Um, I like this kind of, um, it's almost a little bit of a deviation from kind of full natural color. I don't know if you did something in post-processing, but it has a little bit more of an artistic feel, the way the colors are going to me. Like I can see some of the warmth because of the vignette here. Um, you know, I, I like, it just kind of gives me a different feel, and I like that. I also really appreciate that you didn't just go with the standard vertical aspect ratio of your camera. You actually cropped it in a little bit and gave me a little bit more of a narrow feel. I always like it when people, you know, crop and compose for the image instead of just keeping everything in the square that is their camera, you know, the rectangle that we shoot out of. Um, I like to crop things that way as well, and I like that you did this. I like your vignette, um, but I'm wondering, and this is a personal preference, it's a little bit of a sharp edge to it. I mean, it's not super sharp. Um, I'm wondering if we wouldn't soften that up a bit or perhaps consider, instead of a dark vignette, a light vignette. So I'm going to play with it because, you know, sometimes you don't know until you try something. So if I, um, I'm not sure if I can get rid of that vignette, but if I go to, um, you can do it through a variety of different ways. I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter, which is similar to Lightroom. Um, I'm a Camera Raw person, but a lot of people use Lightroom, and that's totally fine with me. Um, but I'm going to see if we can do a vignette, and I'm going to try to brighten it up to overcompensate for the dark, and we're going to see what happens here. So if I pull it up brighter, maybe a little artificial because I've got to compensate for the dark that's in there. Um, let me see if I can feather this out a little bit more. I'm going to try to play with it a little bit. Okay. And let me try this, and I still might play with it and post a little bit. I know it's going to look somewhat artificial right now, again, just because of the fact that I'm overcompensating for um, your vignette. But I'm wondering how this might look to do this just a little bit more subtly. And actually, let me get a layer. I'm going to put an overlay layer on here, and I'm going to just use some white, um, and I'm going to do this at about 10%. And um, I'm going to take this, let me make my brush wider. I'm going to paint in a little bit of light color in here. I just wonder if a white vignette wouldn't convey the image a little bit better for you. Um, and I'm going to also get rid of, I kind of over, overshot here and I kind of, got the face a little bit too white, so let me, um, I'm using a mask to mask that back out, and I'll zoom in really quickly, maybe, 
there we go grab my brush and I can just get that that I kind of I colored outside of the lines darn it so I'm fixing my mistake here really quickly and giving you that color back that you had in the bird's face there you go so I love masking because it's so forgiving all right so I'm wondering if you don't like that a little bit better and I'm wondering if we can't just simply get rid of this extra rock it sort of pulls my eye to the left a little bit and I'm gonna go to edit fill and content aware fill to get rid of that I think it'll work give it a second all right there we go and I'm just wondering how you feel about that kind of a concept um, I would blend in the water a little bit more here I know it looks a little bit stark but it still pulls my eye in and still gives you that vignette and it might look a little more contemporary for you know kind of today's art trends so something to think about a little bit but everything else about this I really love and, and it's sharp I love the colors of course love the bird and um, so something to just think about the next time you go out there and shoot I love high key stuff and um, I'm looking at the chat stuff and Joel I see you do too um, oh interesting you used the dark because the background was blown out originally okay I get where you're going with that and again to each their own um, I like that you tried that approach you could also and this kind of goes for anybody if you're in a situation where you have white water it doesn't necessarily it's all in your vision it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to kind of bring all that color back in if your subject is darker and you're shooting against white water on those you know hazy white skies and and kind of that white water that's reflecting you know the sky it sort of looks bland try for giggles go ahead and overexpose the image in your camera you might have to go up a stop maybe even up to two stops when you're using exposure compensation it will blow out the sky and it will blow out the background it'll give you a high key look for your um, for your animal and I'm gonna see if I can pull up something really quickly to give you an example I may or may not be able to do it on the fly but I'm gonna try uh, let's see here if I can find something really quickly in my archives that might um, highlight that so bear with me while I quickly look I'm not sure if there's anything in here here's an example all right so these are Arctic turns these Arctic turns were shot on one of those gray overcast you know rain come and goes kind of crappy days and so when I shoot up at the sky normally these birds would be almost black because the camera reads the sky as having so much light that it the way it meters for things anything darker than that almost goes like a silhouette so I pushed my exposure up quite a bit I overcompensated or excuse me overexposed I don't remember exactly but I want to say probably a stop in a third stop in two-thirds and so it brings back the color in these birds and therefore the sky goes white but you get that high key look and so I say that because I like your image a lot and that would be something to play with the next time you have a situation like that just as a different way to think about shooting so uh, nice job on both of your images and I really really appreciate you submitting them if you have anything else feel free questions or anything uh, you know chat them and I'll be glad to answer them for you thanks again for sending that in okay I hope this is helpful for folks as we go along whoops not that folder other folder um, I hope that you're getting some good ideas with all of this and seeing some people's beautiful work out there I love seeing what you're doing all right the next one here this is from Krishna and Krishna um, if you want me to unmute you um, if, if you're not sure how to do it uh, just type in the chat message and I'll be glad to do it um, what a gorgeous image uh, you guys are really up in your game here I've got lots of beautiful images tonight um, yes the detail is just gorgeous um, I love this uh, everything is sharp and that's so fun and yet I'm looking at the edges here and it just fades away ever so beautifully like I I really like this I like the way you lit it I like the way you post processed it um, it's just really really pretty and I even really like these little hints of green that just tuck you know right in here the leaves behind such a pretty picture um, I don't know if you happen to 
um, you know, have things that you cleaned up in here. I know sometimes when I photograph flowers, there's little dust spots and stuff. You might have been lucky and there weren't any, but if you did, it was a smart choice to kind of clean those up because on a picture like this, your eye jumps right to those little black spots and stuff that we see on the flowers, the little specks of dirt. This is super cool. Um, this also, for those of you who... Um, are into this kind of thing compositionally, this actually, um, this pattern in here that this flower is following is, um, it follows the Fibonacci sequence. So if you want a little homework to do, go and Google the Fibonacci sequence and I'll type that in there. And um, I can even, uh, if I get a minute, I'll find a YouTube video that's really, really good uh, to explain some of that. I actually teach this in a class, and it's, this is lovely. Um, I, I can honestly say I don't know what I would do to improve upon it. It's gorgeous. I love that you did this off center and not just putting the, you know, the circle right in the middle, especially because you photographed it in a rectangle. So sometimes people will put things right in the middle and on images that are composed in an aspect, aspect ratio that's a rectangle, it can be a challenge. So, and I'm gonna show somebody, show people in here just exactly what I mean. If this were in the middle, it would feel a little lost. Um, if you do put things right in the middle, one thing to try, and Krishna, I know you're, you didn't do this, but I'm gonna use it as an example. One thing to try is to go in with a square crop. So that can help a little bit if you do put something in the middle. And so, you know, if people can see, that looks better than if I were to do a rectangular image with that in the middle. So Krishna, you did a wonderful job in the way you composed this. I love it. I don't know what I'd do with it. And if anybody else has any comments as well, I welcome that. But it's gorgeous. It just makes me happy. Yeah. I, hi, Lisa. I, hi, how are you? Yeah. I am doing good. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. Oh, I just my pleasure. don't got uh, one or two slight spots, uh, which are like dark spots, but yeah. uh, rest of all is as it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. I love this. And um, I, I, it just makes me happy. I mean, yellow is such a bright color, but this is gorgeous. It's sharp. It's clear. It's clean. It's well composed. I love all these lines that just pull you right in and then they suck you right in in here. It's just, you know, it's a beautiful subject and really nicely done. And for the record, I don't think this needs a square crop. I just wanted to use it as an example because sometimes people will shoot in a rectangle and put the thing in the middle and that can feel really, I don't know, it just feels awkward. You did a perfect job with your composition here in my opinion. Yeah, looks awesome. Yeah, thank you. And you're welcome and people are giving you some, some mad props here in the comments as well. So <laughs> anyway, really beautiful <laughs> job. Thank you for submitting it. I appreciate it. I'm going to move on to the next one here. And let's see here, Krishna, oh, it's yours again. Oh, you have a wonderful sense of color. You're just killing me with these really pretty colors. This is outstanding. Wow, where's the, where, it, wherever this is, this had to be so fun to shoot. Look at those colors. Um, uh, yeah, this, this was in Taj Lake, actually. Oh my God, it's beautiful. And so was the lake this color um, where the sun was, the sun, the clouds or whatever reflecting and giving you this pink? Or is this like the color of the ground or the, the you know, whatever is underneath the water? Or is uh, this, this is the color of the brine chimp. Uh, actually, oh. there's a place in Salt Lake. So oh. the brine chimp will be very high in uh, dense. So you get this color. Oh my God, what a pretty thing. What a pretty thing to see. It had to be amazing to sit there and look at all this. Um, this is lovely. I, it's, it just makes me maybe not want to get in the water, but it certainly makes me want to stand in this place for a while. And um, the colors, just this warm kind of salmon pink color. It's just lovely. And the sky is really pretty. And I like how it's almost an abstract. Um, your composition is really, really smart with putting this up in the upper third, if not even the upper quarter. Um, I always say to folks, when you're doing landscapes, especially things like sunrises and sunsets, find what's most interesting and make that the majority of the image. So instead of, you know, cutting it off and putting, you know, if you have a sunset picture, half the sky on top and half of it is water on the bottom, 
pick whatever is most beautiful and make that the dominant part. And you did exactly that. You got the best part of the sky and then you cut it off where probably the color started to go away. And then you let all of this shine through. And it's, it's just beautiful. You have a great sense of color and composition. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, gorgeous. And thanks for submitting. It's good to have you here. I'm glad you could join in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody doing this tonight. So I'm going to move on, but I adore that image. That's so pretty. Um, this is a really fun night. Lots of cool stuff in here. Lots of different stuff. All right. So moving on. Oh, we went from a nice warm sunset to a nice cold bison. Um, this is great, too. I've always wanted to get to Yellowstone in the wintertime. This is Mark. Hey, Mark. Glad to see you here. And um, nice bison that you've got here for us. I... I like the composition with him kind of just looking up at us and yet you get, you know, the horn here coming in and all of the snow caked down to the face and the nostrils. I think you did a nice job of that. Um, I like that I can still connect with his eye here. I'm going to zoom in here and um, I don't know if you played that up a little bit or not, but if you did, it was a really smart choice. And if you did, it was really lucky that because sometimes bison eyes can really be dark and um, well, they are dark and it's hard to kind of see them pop through. And if you wanted to play it up even more, Mark, I don't think it would hurt it. I'm going in and creating an overlay layer in post-processing and I'm going to put my opacity at about, I don't know, maybe 10%. And I've got my brush here and my brush is, um, just so you know, my brush is at a hardness of zero, opacity of 10% white on this overlay layer. So I created a new layer and just change it from normal to overlay. And then when I go in here, I can play up the highlight just a little more. And I do this a lot with my animal uh, pictures, birds, nature, especially when, you know, you can see the eye, but you need people to connect with it better. And we can also play up any of the dark parts of it, too, to give it a little more contrast here and just make it pop for people. So I'm just doing that a little bit. Sometimes you can do it and overdo it, so be thoughtful about that. But I'm looking for where those highlights are so I can get people into that image even better because we all want to connect with the eye. So when I pull back on that and I show you the before and after, let me just uh, merge those layers. So there's the before, there's the after. It's not a huge difference, but if I can create a little bit more brightness, remember our eye goes to the brightest spots and then the darkest spots in the image. And if I need to connect with the eye, because that's what we do as human beings when we see other pictures of animals or animals, you know, standing there in the field, we want to connect with those eyes. That's how we read things. It's just a very primal thing we do. Just brightening that up a little bit more gets me in there a little bit more easily. Um, other than that, I don't think that I would really change a thing about this. I think it's very, very pretty the way it is. Um, I like that you went and did a tight crop on here so I can really just pay attention to the face and the nose and those kinds of things. Um, I really like this. If anybody else has any thoughts or comments, I welcome them. Um, Oh, yes. Okay, I get totally what you mean, uh, Mark, where you said um, you learned the opacity tool in your last webinar and you're getting better at it but didn't want to overdo it. I, I It looked like you might have done it just because I know how dark those eyes are. Um, yeah, and if, you know, it's it's your picture, so, you know, and it could be, I'm going to say this too, different monitors may also be calibrated differently. So what my monitor shows me might look different than, you know, what it would look on yours. So I always keep that in mind as well. On mine, it looks good. It, for some of you that may be looking at this on the webinar, it might, um, you know, there might be a different look or feel or, you know, color can look a little bit different depending on how your monitor is. Um, yeah, I, this is great. I really like the image. I like the tight crop on it. Um, bison can be a challenge sometime to photograph and I like it. I also really like the little detail here and I don't know if you played this up or this was how it was in the picture but it it was smart if you played it up to get the the lightness in here to just give me some line and definition in that hair. I really like that as well. Um, good job on this and um, yeah, just a nice shot. I'm glad you got to go. I don't know if there's that Yellowstone or where this was, but I'm glad wherever you got to go, you got to go see these guys in the winter with those frozen faces. 
Yes, you did highlight the fur. It was a smart choice to do so, Mark. Really smart choice. All right, I'm going to keep going here. Um, let's see here. Let me get the next one from Mark. And if I haven't said so already, thanks, everybody, for submitting your images and, uh, you know, kind of taking a risk to do so. I never would want to make it a bad experience for you. Um, but I know it's still sometimes nerve-wracking, and no matter who's, you know, judging your work, right? I know people who are just kind of to the point where they feel comfortable even posting something in our journey group, right? There's like, this is the first time I've posted something, not because they just joined, because they just got the nerve. And so I always appreciate it, you know? It's, it's our art. It's hard to put it out there for other people to, you know, critique and so forth. Oh, so you got this lovely eagle in this fresh snowfall. This is really, really pretty. And one of the things that's so darn hard with eagles is photographing them so that, you know, we've got this dark bird and these light head and tail, photographing them so the whites aren't blown out, yet you can see the dark parts of the feathers as well. And, oh, it's just so hard. Um, you had really soft early morning light, and I think that works really, really well here. And your focus is spot on. I love that I can see that he's been, you know, walking along in the snow. Um, it reminds me, as a sidebar, I went... Um, cross-country skiing one time a long time ago in a golf course you know I'm skiing along and I'm kind of blazing my own trail and then all of a sudden I came across these bunny tracks you know hop 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 and you see the little footprints of the hops and then all of a sudden you see all these feather marks in the snow and no more bunny tracks and it was like this whole story just played out for me you know sometime before I got there but you could just see exactly what happened and this reminds me of that moment which was a fun moment um, so you did a good job of not blowing out these highlights and yet work in your image um, so that you still have these details in the feathers whether you did it in post or whether it was this way um, you know in camera uh, it was it was well done because this is so tricky to do um, I like this long shadow here um, I don't know if y'all can can see the shadow but the shadow of him is a wonderful leading line that gets you right to him. I know, Mark, you couldn't say, hey, I'm going to put a shadow here, but it works. And, and same with these little tracks. So it's just two wonderful leading lines that take you right in. Compositionally, you also did a really good job. I'm going to put the rule of thirds up here. And you can see, you know, if I divided this picture into thirds, both vertically and horizontally, in case this is a new concept for some folks. Um, he put the subject right in that rule of thirds in the PowerPoint where it intersects. That tends to create a much stronger compositional view in most cases. Doesn't mean we can't break the rules from time to time, but you did a good job of doing exactly that and then leaving all of this negative space, which I really appreciate. So I like it. Um, one thing, and this, can, this is a like a, maybe you want to try it, maybe you don't, because I can totally see it either way. Um, snow ends up turning very blue unless we overexpose for it. But it's really hard to do that when you have a bird and you don't want to overexpose the highlights of the bird. So therefore, this snow looks blue back here because of, you know, our cameras, our digital cameras tend to shoot snow and other brighter things more blue but especially snow and then shadows turn extra blue so one thing i'm just going to try to play with this quickly mark uh, to give people an idea i could go into um, i'll just try camera raw filter for a minute since i know a lot of people process at least with lightroom um, and this is something you could try there i've made a duplicate copy of this image i can then go and i can play up the temperature so that will make the snow warmer and cooler, right? That's one option, kind of get juxtaposed warmer and cooler. Um, that can be one look. I'm just going to give you a couple ideas. Um, there's the original. That's how it is. Or we can go in with saturation, and I could go and actually with my saturation, go to my saturation uh, tab, choose saturation, and then pull down the blues, and pull down perhaps the aquas because sometimes blue and aqua, um, you know, kind of go hand in hand. Um, so I could pull those down a little bit and that can give you a different look. Now, 
I don't know if you like it or not. I'm kind of on the fence about it because the blue sort of makes it pop. But I'm just giving it as a technique. If you need to get rid of blue for some reason in your image or some other color that's too dominant, those are a couple quick ways you can think about doing it. But I love this. I think you did a great job. And the way the shadow is in here, and this is just perfect leading lines in your composition is you just hit it out of the park. So just a couple things to, to give you some possible ideas. But uh, anyway, personal choice. Good job. All right, let me go to the next one here. And uh, Melanie, thank you for submitting, my dear. Oh, it's a badge. It's a little badger, I think. Hey, where'd it go? Um, maybe I didn't. There we go. Oh, this is wonderful. This looks like um, perhaps it was shot in the uh, with a flash or at the end of the day or a flash setup, perhaps. Um, Melanie, I don't know if you're on the line, but feel free and chime in if you are. And um, if not, well, you'll hear the recording on this one. But if it was with a flash, you did a nice job. It doesn't look too harsh. And flash sometimes can look really, really harsh. Um, it looks like if you did... Perhaps it was even off-camera flash, by the way. I'm looking at how the shadows and things are. Um, but a nice job with the badger. And I'm going to zoom in because you guys can really see the clarity here. Everything is quite sharp right down to those claws. And look at those claws. Um, this is really super cool. Um, I really like what you did. And I think you can serve yourself well to also... Get a tight shot of him, too. I mean, that's a really nice shot, and you've still got plenty of pixels and clarity to do it. Um, so just giving you some thoughts on that. If you used potentially a two-flash setup, I'm looking at these two dots in the eyes, um, and it could be that that's reflecting off something, but if you did a two-flash setup, uh, a little trick, and I do this in my hummingbird photography workshops when we're doing our flashes, is you can get rid of, and I'm using the healing tool, one of those little dots and it will make it look just a tad more natural um but i like that the way it is um you know i, I don't wouldn't like tone down anything else i like the way this looks the other thing that you might consider doing um i'm looking at the grasses behind this animal and there we go these green stems are really picking up a lot of the flash and they tend to pull my eye up here we could certainly apply the same technique that we applied in one of the images earlier in the day. I'm going to grab a darker color green from another part of that. I'm going to go in with my brush, and I can actually just tone those down a little bit more. I can paint on them, or I, you know, I'm, I'm on an overlay layer right now, and I can just kind of make that not quite so bright so that it doesn't look like the flash was just super intense. I don't think your flash was too bright, but those green plants really, really picked up on it. I'm going to increase my uh, opacity to 20% just to make it a little faster. Whoops. And I have got a dark green color in my palette over here. So that might help a little bit. I'm going to zoom back out so I can get the, the rest of that. And you can play with it a little bit more. I'm trying to be, you know, fairly fast with this for the sake of time. But if I tone down some of the other green in here, and you may even want to choose black to do some of it, um, but it can just, oops, that's a little bit too much. I'll try 10%. It may be just vignette a little bit of the top here. It will make your animal stand out a little bit more, and it will kind of take down some of that flash. Same with this part up here in the front. It's a pretty bright spot. Um, we can tone that down. And if you have a hard time doing it, um, you know, sometimes it gets super bright in here. Um, another trick you can do, I'm going to turn this layer off for a minute, we'll go to filter, camera raw filter, and we can pull down uh, selectively the highlights. So I'm going to go to my brush up here. And then I'm going to go to my palette and just pull down highlights and then brush over that area. So it will only touch the highlights in the image. So this is another way you can accomplish that and we can do it with the grasses as well. And it just takes out some of the harshness 
um, that that flash is showing because it was uh, bouncing off. So we can do it. You could even pull it down even more if you needed to. There's a point where it'll start to look muddy, so we need to be thoughtful about that. Um, but when we do that, I'm going to actually then get rid of some of the um, the darkness that I put down here previously in my overlay layer because now it looks bad. So I'm going to get rid of some of that additional darkness I had added before. Um, so those are a couple little thoughts on that. So I think just to review, it's awesome. It's sharp. It's a cool subject. Um, you could even crop in, like I said before, and you would have a really nice tight subject just like that, you know, um, somewhere in there. Uh, but pulling out, getting rid of some of those highlights, I think can really help you. And uh, just to give you an idea of what that'll look like then, um, here's the before, there's the after. And I think it just gets my attention into that badger a little bit more, but good job. I might still play with this foreground a little bit here. I was doing it quickly and maybe clean up this little piece of grass, but um, but you get the idea of, of what I'm doing, and I hope that that is helpful. And someone asked, um, how did I get to Camera Raw from Photoshop? I go up to Filter, and then Camera Raw Filter, and that will pop me right into Adobe Camera Raw. All right. So I'm going to go to the next one here. Melanie, uh, oh, I think that might not, I'm not sure if that's a critique or if that's an accident. Um, I'm going to move past that one for the moment. I don't know, um, I'm unclear on that one. So um, I'm going to go to the next one here by Pat. And hey, Pat, if I hope you're on the line. Are you, um, are you logged in today? I am oh. here and I am hey. thoroughly enjoying how good you are at post-processing. It's oh. been amazing. Well, you know, thanks. And I owe you a check for that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good to talk with you again, my dear. For, for those who don't know, Pat went with me to Alaska this summer, my Alaska workshop, and we just had a blast. So we it's did. good to hear your voice, my dear. Oh, <laughs> Um, and hopefully you caught up on your sleep by now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, um, Pat, was this in Alamosa? This was at Great Sand Dunes uh, National Park in southern Colorado. Okay. All right. So near Alamosa, not right in Alamosa. Yeah, you're right. But but you're I was right. in that area. Yeah, I've always wanted to go here. And I'd been to Alamosa and didn't have the time to get over here to that area. And I've always wanted to. So um, thanks for making me feel even worse about not being able to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, this is gorgeous. I really, really love the light and the time of day that you chose for this to give all these just delicious shadows and contrast and light and you know, just focusing right in on it. I like this um, this lower area too, where you just got a little bit of uh, you know some some grasses and some different things. I really really like that. I think you chose the perfect time of day to be there for the the light and the shade and all of that. If this was the middle of the day and you didn't have see these areas of high contrast right here, this little ribbon of light and these lovely lines. Our eyes are always drawn to contrast. And so when you find things that have a lot of contrast, you are going to say, oh my God, that's beautiful. In most cases, you know, I mean, composition has to be there and everything else, but um, it makes people go, ooh, because our eyes have all these little things that we can hang out on. And to give you a quick example of what happens when we don't have contrast, I'm going to um, take the contrast all the way out of this as best that I can. Um, I'll even take some brightness out. I could even do this more in post-processing, but it would, t not to ruin your image, I just want people to understand what contrast does when we have it or don't have it. So if I took the contrast out of here, if I took my highlights down, if I pulled my shadows up, and it's still gonna be hard to do in this image because you have such wonderful contrast, but it's not nearly is interesting. And so I just think you did a wonderful job. Um, let me see if I can even do it more. Um, you know, if we got rid of a lot of that contrast, it starts to just look blah. And so I think you did a lovely job. Let me get rid of this layer here so we can go back to yours of having that beautiful contrast in. It creates interest and it makes me want to stay in the image. And your light, um, the, the way this contrast happens, it's not the light right on it. Your light isn't at your back. Your light is actually to the left of you. And 
a tip from a landscape photographer uh, told me this one time. If you want to see the best opportunities for shots, go walk down the trail or in the field or down the street or whatever it is and have the sun at your shoulder. And that way, when you're walking forward and the sun's at your shoulder, you're always going to have this gorgeous side light and that will really help you see the potential of what's out there the best. So you were doing exactly that because the sun is, you know, pretty much at your shoulder um, and then it helps create all these wonderful light and dark areas. I just really, really love this. And I even think you could add even more trees down here at the bottom, but I realize you're at the edge of your limit of your frame. Uh, but I like that these trees have grounded this a little bit. It gives me a little bit of extra color. If we got rid of them just for giggles um, and I did something, you know, I don't know, something right about like that, um, it's not bad. I would, I would clean that up. But I feel like the trees just give a little bit more. So I like that you have those in there. It also gives it a sense of scale too. Um, these are a lot bigger than you might think. So um, what would it look in black and white? Karen, great. Hey, Karen, uh, great question, by the way. So if I take that and I'll, um, you know what? I will use um, Silver FX Pro. And so Pat, somebody asked what it would look like in black and white. Um, so we're going to go take a look at that and I'm just going to apply some different filters so we can see what, what comes of it. Give it a second to load. All right. So I have all kinds of different filters in here and I'm just going to run through them so you can see the different effects that they have. And obviously you can change the intensity and, you know, of these filters, but black and white, I think your image has a lot of potential. That one's kind of neat. Uh, a lot of potential to play with in a black and white as well. That's high key. We probably wouldn't do that. Um, there's low key. That's kind of interesting. Some of them get really grainy. I wouldn't try those. That's really pretty. That's a nice one as well. Full dynamic. Um, there's full dynamic smooth. Um, so you get an idea of what different ways to process in black and white can look like. Um, if you also use the tool Luminar, they have some wonderful black and white um, and monochrome filters as well. Um, and you can kind of play through them. That's very interesting. Um, so anyway, you can get an idea of what those will look like. So I think black and white is uh, totally an option here too, but I love your colors in this as well. That's kind of warm uh, tones and then it almost gets into the lavender and the shadows. Uh, it's really, really pretty. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, if I went and grabbed a sample of that color, um, see how that's actually kind of blue lavender and I, I think it's pretty. So um, anyway, gorgeous image, Pat. Nicely done and good to see you again here. Do you have any other questions or comments? Oh, she's loving it. Okay, good. Sounds like you muted yourself. No worries. Yeah, um, I am muted. I just really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I had oh. such. I actually spent two nights there, so I took. Oh. So now here's you know the other time of day. A shot. Oh yeah. Is this more in the afternoon? Must be. I'm. Actually, I think this is morning. Oh, is it morning? Okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? If you're facing those and you're on the south side, it would be morning. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, I like this. I like this, like the line that kind of takes you up through and in here. Um, I like it. But I think I like your other one better. Um, but of the two... I think I like the other one better, but I like that you can see um, some more ground here, like the, the grasses or whatever is here before. I really like that. I'd be curious if the sky had some texture to see if that would, um, you know, like some clouds or something in there to see if that would change it at all. But I'm thinking I like the clarity, like the, the other one seemed a little bit sharper. I don't know if this was zoomed in a little bit or, or cropped in or shot on a higher ISO. There's a little bit of noise to it, but we could probably play that, um, play that down a li little bit using noise canceling software or even um, if you go into, I keep beating on uh, <laughs> a, a camera raw here, but a little trick in camera raw is if you go into um, 
oh, let me find it here. If we go into, why do I, um, can't find it for a minute. I must be losing my mind. Where is it? Um, Oh, there we go. I passed it. Go into noise reduction luminance, and you can pull the luminance over a little bit, and it will it will take down the noise, but it also softens the image a little bit. So, you know, there's a trade-off there. You may even choose to just mask certain portions, um, you know, of that if you want to, um, because, you know, luminance does tend to make it a little bit more soft. All neat noise, uh, denoising software does that. Um, but I... Ah, somebody is adding that place to the list. Yeah, I, it's a really cool place. Another, if you like the dunes kind of thing, just throwing this out there, um, is the Inland Empire area of, um, you know, it's just west of Yuma, Arizona, at the Yuma, California border. Huge sand dunes out there. Um, go in the middle of the week, otherwise it's full of razors and people destroying the sand dunes. But um, that's another huge place. And um, I had to drive through there, and I couldn't, unfortunately, stop. But the full moon was rising right through those dunes when I was driving through there the last time. And it was killing me that I couldn't be somewhere to shoot it. You know, here I am on the expressway. But anyway, um, I like this too, but I think I like your other one better, Pat. Uh, but what a really cool place to, uh, to go. And you got a great image, and I'm sure more, out of it. Thank and, you so much, Lisa. Yeah, I did take, of course, hundreds of pictures. but uh, yes. And it's hard to know... It, well, again, I just love your, um, I love the way you teach. It's just so helpful. Aww. So thank you. Thank you, you again. Are, you are so welcome, my dear. And don't forget the options of, you know, kind of taking some of these and maybe thinking about a diptych or a triptych. It'd be interesting to experiment with it or even taking just this part and doing an abstract and then, you know, cutting these up and putting it on the wall like as, 12 by 12s or something. I don't know. It'd be an interesting thing to experiment with, but whenever I kind of get textures and patterns like that, that's what I always want to go to to try. So that might be something to play with it even further or some of your other ones because I do love that image in its original form. It's really, really nice. All right, I'm going to move along. I've got two more images uh, before our time is up. Um, and Pat, by the way, I'll see you in a few more minutes for the Alaska we webinar. So, <laughs> Yes, looking forward to the re reunion. Oh, me too, me too. Rim, um, I don't know if Rim is on the line tonight. I'm looking and I'm not seeing his name here. So he might not have been able to participate live, but um, Rim, he, he goes by the nickname of Rim. He has been doing photography for years and years and years and years and years. And I really appreciate that, uh, Rim, you submitted an image in here, and it's nice to see your name and your face. Um, this is lovely. It is, I don't know if it's... Um, uh, some kind of lily. I'm trying to think. I feel. Oh, it's. You know what? I bet you this is. This is one of those uh, night blooming cactus flowers. I think. Just looking at these petals. Um, this is lovely, and I absolutely love this extra detail down here. It's almost like the flower is reaching out to to try to touch you. You know, the photographer. I love the light coming through the back. It really helps. Um, you know, me pay attention to these details here. And it's also really nicely in focus. This is such a pretty image. I really, really love it. I think the crop that you did with it is very smart. So a square crop with this more in the middle. It, it, I didn't know this was going to happen because I didn't look at, I, I don't look at these until we actually do them. Um, so I, you know, here I'm talking about square crop and this is a good example of one that works really nicely. Um, I'm going to zoom in here. One little simple thing you could do, because there's that little darn spot. Every flower seems to have one. Just get rid of that little um, dust spot or dirt or whatever it happened to be. And, and I don't even know that I would do any other thing with this. I think it is just gorgeous. I would love to see this image printed either um, on the acrylic, where it's printed to the back of the acrylic, or... Um, I think it could be beautiful on some of the, um, gosh, there's some papers out there that are like almost opalescent, not really, but they kind of have a nice sheen to them. There's a vintage silk paper that I've been looking at that has this really interesting sheen to it, and I could see that being printed on that. Um, so a lot of our photography, when we 
prints and I've gotten more into printing in the past year or so than I have in the past lifetime but I, now that I've learned so much more about it I've really appreciated what different papers can do to bring out the best in our images um, so you know I wouldn't do this on a canvas because all these little veins and the light and everything so soft and delicate I would pick a really pretty paper for that um, I just love this really really pretty and I appreciate you sending it in for us Rim Anybody else have any thoughts or comments on that? Feel free and comment. I see that people are saying the details often. I like the f awesome and uh, you like the flower petals. I agree. They're just beautiful. Um, all right. I'm going to move on here so we can wrap up before I got to jump into my next meeting. All right. We are wrapping up with a gorgeous pop of this awesome violet color. Um, Rim, these are really pretty. I'm not sure what this flower is. Um, the petals sort of remind me of a, um, oh my gosh, uh, they're related to the carnation and I can't think of the name right now off the top of my head. Um, but this is really pretty. I love your water droplets. There's, a, there's something about here that I, I really like that you did. You've got this bright water droplet here. And then this, in theory, would normally be the focus and my eye kind of plays back and forth with these. And all these smaller ones kind of just hold my attention right where it should be. I really like that a lot. Um, I wonder, and I'm just going to play around with this for one second, if we couldn't, and I'm going to do it quickly with my dodge tool. I don't usually like to use dodge, but I'm doing this because I'm in a hurry. Uh, normally, I would do an overlay layer. But if we played up the highlights here, just a little bit more. Remember, our eye goes to contrast. And if I pull up the highlights, and I might even pull up a little of the midtones here. And let me make this a little bit more powerful. I can see just getting my eye in here. I might have to go to my overlay layer after all. Um, doing a little bit of white. And then... Going down into a little pixel level here, practically zooming in. Oops. And if I just play that up a little bit more, it will help us get into that center, given that strong um, water droplet off to the left, and help make it easier for me to pay attention to these guys in here because they're really cool and they're really important. And so I'm just lightening these up. Hopefully that comes across in, uh, in the screen. And trying to do it a little bit more. If you do it too much, it can look weird. But if I do that, maybe even just a tad more in through here. And I'm doing it kind of quick. I apologize. I'd usually not be quite so heavy-handed here, but just for the sake of time. So I'm just playing up some of the natural highlights that are in there and um, making that pop just a little more. And if we do so, you've got this here and then it's a little bit easier for me to get over to this area. So it's just a thought. Um, I'm going to do the before and afters so that you guys can decide. Because sometimes you do stuff and, you, you know, you don't like it when you're done. So, um, whoops, let me try that again. Merge layers. There we go. So. There's the first one. There's the second one. Now I could even try just, just because sometimes I experiment. I could take highlights and burn the highlights down a little bit in this one. I don't like that that muddies that so much. So I may not really love that. Um, I might have to play with that more and not use the burn tool and use something else. But it would take away this drop and make you focus here. I don't know that that's what you even want, Rim. I doubt it. But I'm giving people this example because you can see how contrast and light changes where you want your viewer's eye to go. So if that, you know, if, if here is where you want them to go, we'd need to tone this down. If only here is where you want to go, you would leave this tone down, which I'm showing right now. So it's just, um, you know, a couple of ideas to get you to think about how contrast helps you see um, your image and, and what it does to uh, get your viewer's eye somewhere or take them away from somewhere. But I love this uh, flower. I love the big water droplet. 
and uh, God, that color is gorgeous. So I just want to say thank you. Um, before we wrap up, does anybody have questions or comments? Um, anything at all that I can help you with before we go? Anything in Photoshop? I know there were a couple Photoshop questions floating around. Anything I can do for you before we sign off tonight? Thank you so much, everybody. I hope to see you again on a future one. And have a wonderful evening. Um, I'll let you go for now and keep shooting out there. You guys are doing great work out there. And thanks for being a part of the journey. Talk to you soon, everyone.